five times ten is more is more five times ten is more appropriate so yes. you've been about 50 games yes oh come on really on today's episode of the early coding show i have an amazing fantastic guest with me today and this young man has been building amazing stuff he loves building games and he's built lots of games using different platforms and somewhere on the show today he's actually going to walk you through the process of building a game so if you've not built a game before or you're wondering how are video games built then just stay tuned to the show and you're going to get some learning done today hello my name is Chimareza Daniel Chikadibia I'm 10 years old and I started programming at six years old so um, tell me, what was the first programming language that you learned? The first programming languages that I learned are Scratch and Code in, uh, well, Scratch and Code Game Lab. Can you remember the first thing you built? What was the, the first program you created? The first game that I built was uh, was a game in Code called Coin Coin Star. It was a single player game. Yes. Where did this whole idea of building games come from? Why were games the first thing you started building when you started learning how to code? Well, at first, in school, I, at six or five years old, that's when they started teaching programming. At first, I was like, what in the world is programming and what does it do? Then when I saw my, my teacher show us what he built and in code game lab i was like wow i really love to be one of these myself so i started learning programming and now at this stage i'm now being able to create some from really some amazing things that my whole class has, start, has started to get interested in for oh, your classmates are not interested in what you are building yes amazing amazing um so like, how many games have you built so far? Do you have an idea? Do you have a number? I don't think I can count. Give me an idea. Yeah. Five, oh, ten? To, oh, so I think five times ten is more. Is more five times ten is more appropriate. So yes. you've built about 50 games? Yes. Oh, come on. Really? I'm sure. So, okay, I'm curious, Izzy. Where do ideas for your games come from? What inspires you to build games? Well, sometimes I've sometimes i have to go online looking for game ideas but then when i just get then i read a, a certain web page that said that we should that you should do the niche that you should do the niche and hit it okay. at first i was like what's a niche the one he gave an example now like instead of just a normal racing game it could be a sci-fi racing game so that's when I started. I started pondering on this, and created so, and created some some games. And then I now thought about. Then I now thought about one particular project that I called. I created when I was around nine or when I was around eight or nine, called Diver Dash to checkpoints. Where do you keep all these games after you have done building them? Do you upload them somewhere on the internet? Where Where can we find your games? Well. I save them on my laptop. You save them on your laptop? Yes. Uh oh. Okay, so do you have all of them, all 50 games on your laptop now? No, sometimes my laptop crashed. Your laptop crashed and you lost the games? Yes. Oh, then I think we need to work on moving your games and backing them up somewhere. Um, okay, so when you want to start building a game now, maybe there's a child out there watching this and he loves game development, wants to learn to build games. What's the first thing you do? Where do you start from when you want to build a new game? Well, at first, you have to start planning the planning the game. Like, if you just open on your laptop and say, "I want to build the game," you start writing your first piece. You start putting your first piece of code, and then you'll be like, "What am I doing? What am I even creating?" You have to first first you have to gain a gander an idea and write the write it down somewhere, and then you now start. You know, create the name of the game and everything. Then when you're when you're done, you start you start making a way to improve your idea. When you're done with that, you you start with the you start with the events. How will it, how will your game start? How will everything begin? So quickly, um, 
what makes a good game? What makes a bad game? What's, how do you know that this game was built by someone who knows what he is doing? Well, at first, what makes a good game? At first, difficulty and, the, and good gameplay and mechanics. If the gameplay and mechanics are, are all wrong, it will just be, just be strange. How will, how will you even play the game if, you, if, you're not, if there is no way to play it at all? You are just watching the character standing there or just watching yourself lose time to time. Second way, you have to create something new, something not many people haven't thought of. Because as uh, even a vague similarity familiarity with the game, it makes the game kind of boring. Okay. So you're thinking of something new, something yes. okay, so you talked about two platforms. You say you built in Scratch and in Kodu Game Lab. Yes. So I'd like to see one game you built in Scratch and one you built in Kodu Game Lab. Let's okay. see what they look like. Yeah, so. Okay, so maybe start again. And then, so tell me as you're playing it, tell me what the game does. I can see it's very colorful. Yes, that's where I got the idea of okay. At first, I was trying to create the, back, the background. And then. Play it while you talk. Oh, At first, I was trying to create the, the backdrop. Then, I was just trying to create a red square, then a small square, then a, and change the colors. So, I thought, why am I wasting my time? I can use a code to do this. So, when I created the code, it's now, I now kept on using them. Using so, the, the, the color changes, time. there's a code controlling all the changing of the colors and everything. Yes. Hmm. So you are controlling the bat at the bottom and the ball is randomly moving. What are those um, objects in the middle there? Oh, those objects, if you touch them, if the ball touches them or hits them, you get an extra two points. Oh, really? Yes. You know what? I would like to see your code. Can I, can I, can you just stop the game and show us a little bit of the code? Okay. I want to see the code that is responsible for changing the color of the ball and making all of that happen. So, okay. So the ball. At first. So you created when, all of these blocks of code. Yes. Okay, fantastic. But to be true, this is actually small compared to the other to the other lines to the other codes that I. You've made to. more complex games than this. this. Is like a very simple one. Well, it's not really that simple, but I've, but I've, had, but I've, but still, this one particular character. As a, as a lot of code and more, a lot of people need to understand. Hmm. So, okay, so now show me something in the other program you've built. It's a Kodu game lab, so show me something in Kodu. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. okay, so tell me as, tell me what, what happens to, who is Vengo? Vengo is the guy on the bike? Yes. Okay. okay. At first, you're supposed to carry these stars to camouflage because sometimes you can get in really bad situations and just need to camouflage. If the name of the game is to defeat all the the five fly the five fly fish, Joe, Beans, Fisher, and two more. Um, so are they shooting you there? Yes, they are okay. currently attacking. So how do you shoot back? To shoot with a normal pistol. When you, when you don't have a missile, just use space bar. First, you have to you have to look at the person that you're shooting, then press space bar. Ah, you just shot him. Yes, and I defeated him. So now I think I want to get some more missiles. Okay, you can pick up missiles along the way while you move. Yes. Oh, I can see the missiles along the way. Okay. So yeah, he can't see me currently. So I can just okay, he can't on. see you, so that's why he's yes. not shooting at you yet. Yes, but when he sees me, he now starts to shoot at me. Oh, now yeah. he sees no, you. No, so, someone is, is seeing me. Another enemy me. has seen you. Yes. And he's shooting at you. Wow. You know what? Now, I, I'm interested in something. Okay, so right now, I want you to, in two, three minutes, pretend you want to build a new game okay. in Kodu Game Lab. Okay. Do something for me in two, three minutes, as if you're building a brand new game. So, okay. And just walk me through the process. And this is somebody who has never seen Kodu Game Lab before. 
show us how it works what do you do how do you create new characters how do you create your controls and all of the activity and mechanics so okay at first i think we should click we're supposed to click on new world okay so, and it, so since we're not copying any of these let's just start with a little sheet of or land. I'm creating a, a racing game with two characters. One, the one you're supposed to control and the one you're supposed to fit. Okay. So at first we're supposed to create the terrain and how the race game is going to be. So to move, to move we, we use WASD. Okay. W to move forward, D to move right. S to move down okay and A to move left so now I think this terrain is okay so now I think we're going to add something or either a piece of land or let's use a finish line so now we just try to make the line okay for the finish line so that's the finish line yes okay so now we want to add a character any character I think I'll go with the cycle so we can now make it any color of our choice. I'll choose, I choose red now. So first we're supposed to, use, to make it able to move. So we use keyboard, arrows, and then we just say move. Or we, since we want it, it's a race game, let's make it move quick. The, the highest capacity of... of oh, so speed. the more the quickly, the faster it moves. Interesting. Yes. We can now make it first person. Now we go to view and use first person. So if so we could it would be like we're using the Ah so he's it's eyes. his view we are using now. Yes. Okay. okay. So now we can now move with it. Interesting. I think it's now more like VR. Okay. And still and like more like a VR race game. You know so what I is it? I think you need to you need to run a game development class and I think we need to get students to come to your class because this is amazing. I mean, within just about three minutes, you've built an arcade, a racing game. I mean, of course, you've not added a lot of other structures and other things, but it's yeah. already looking some like something that I want to play. Have you sold any of your games? No, but I'm hoping to. You're hoping to sell one, one of these things? Yes. Okay. I know there are many game development platforms out there. You've talked about to Scratch and Code. What other ones do you know? And what are you looking forward to being able to learn in the future? Okay. At first, I'm looking forward to learn Game Maker Studio 2. Okay. And with, with that, I have to learn C Sharp. And, good, good, and with Godot, I also have to learn C Sharp. And I'm also looking forward to learning Construct, to learn construct 3. Because there's this game that, it, that, that Construct 3 that was that constructly was used to create okay. and a lot of my classmates have, have a lot of my classmates have been asking me do you have katana zero do you have katana zero so now I, so they are playing the game yes. you are interested in being able to create something like that yes interesting so you want instead of them playing that other game you want them to play your own game yes Ah, uh, interesting. So you probably want to make money from your classmates playing the game. Yes. Nice, nice. So what new languages are you looking forward to learning in the near future? Okay. I'm looking forward to learn Python and the latest Harbinger in town. Unreal, Unreal Studio. Unreal. Ah, fantastic. Unreal makes amazing games that look real like real human beings. Wow, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a pleasure having AZ on this show. I mean, AZ is 10 years old. He has built more than 50 games. He just, you just saw him start building a racing game and in three minutes, he was already, he, the, the game is already playable. That's something that any child could do. AZ is 10. Imagine what it is going to be doing in the next three, four years. One of our goals at the STEM Academy by Dave Shu is to lower the age of innovation in Nigeria. We have 20 something year old innovators creating amazing things in Nigeria. We want to get that age low 10, 12, 15. They should be building things and contributing to global technology. And that's why we are doing what we do. So, by the way, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. And in subsequent episodes, we bring you other amazing developers, amazing innovative young people who are creating things to solve the problems of the future. Once again, 
My name is David Ogunshola, and this is The Early Coding Show. Thank you for joining us.